Nation's Photo Lab and Pounds Labs welcomed you to Simplified Outdoor Portrait Lighting. We're going to learn how to photograph in any situation and apply just the right amount of flash fill so the picture still looks natural and not overpowered. Let's get right into it. The overall plan is this. We want to consistently achieve images that require little or no post-production time. The more time you spend there, the less time you spend selling or shooting. To do this with as few steps as possible, so that our images have quality color, exposure, and fill flesh. We have two lighting situations primarily that we deal with. High contrast lighting in sunlight, or where the subject is in the shade and the backgrounds in the sunlight. Our goal there is to flash fill that equals the solar exposure. And then low contrast lighting situations on cloudy days or where the subject and background are both in the shade. Our goal there is to flash fill to complement the ambient exposure without overpowering it. How to achieve accurate exposure and color. Why not just set our camera to P for professional? Let's face it, automatic is easier, but it's not intended for professional results. Any automated system will make automated mistakes. Back in the film days, things were easy. You could underexpose a lot, you could overexpose a lot and still make saleable results. But with digital, it's much like Chrome. A little underexposure may be acceptable, but any overexposure will seriously affect the quality of our images. You remember the show The Price is Right? Well, in The Price is Right, you had to guess the price of the product without going over. Well, the same thing is true in digital photography. If we have a correctly exposed image and we send it to our lab to be printed, it's going to look great. It's going to have detail in the shadows. It's going to have detail in the highlights. Now, if we underexpose a photograph and then try to correct it, the picture looks flat. It doesn't have the spark it had earlier. Plus, we're going to lose detail and become ghosty in the dark areas. But much worse is an overexposed image. Overexposure eats up what's available on the sensor. Just a third of a stop affects it. In this case, we're one stop over. We're going to print it down until it looks as good as it can. And look what we've got. Contrasty. Red. We've lost detail in the highlights. Notice the yellow shirt. It ain't yellow no more, and it isn't going to be again. If we print that till the shirt looks yellow, the kid will even be more orange than he is already. Yes, you could shoot in RAW, but the problem with that is shooting in RAW means every image has to go back for post-processing. If you can shoot in JPEG, you can get away from the computer much faster. In the transition period between learning to shoot JPEG and leaving RAW, you might want to consider shooting RAW plus JPEG. By doing this, the post-processing can be greatly reduced if you follow the instructions on this video. Get as close to a correct exposure as possible without going over. Automatic exposure methods make automatic mistakes even in the most advanced electronics. If you take a picture with a very, very dark background, your skin tone is going to be blown out because the automated system will see all that dark and think it's a dark image and overexpose it. If you photograph against a light background, again, the system will see the light area and underexpose it. Now you might say, well, I'll use facial recognition, and that way the exposure will be right on the face. You could get a proper exposure on the face that way, or at least one that would be acceptable, but your background's still going to be black and it's still going to be blown out. Automatic white balance is one of the big evils of digital photography, and it makes automatic mistakes as well. When you're photographing against a lot of green, it's going to throw in magenta to overpower. In fact, whatever color is dominant in the image, like for in this case orange, it's going to throw the complementary color in and throw off the skin tones. Yes, you could fix it after the fact, but why when you can get it right in the camera the very first time and go straight to production? All cameras are not created equal. If we're talking about two models of the same camera, one serial number apart, 
coming out of the factory, one can be a third of a stop darker than ideal, and another one can be a third of a stop brighter. This two-thirds of a stop latitude is exactly what the manufacturer is shooting for. Oh, they'd love to have it perfect, but in reality, they can't achieve that at a reasonable price. Here's the real bad news. The lenses are the same way. So how do you achieve an accurate exposure when your equipment is not exactly tuned as it should be? Well, we could use a meter, but the problem with that is the meter is tuned to an ideal. We would have to be able to tune that meter to be an exact match for our camera and lens. If we change lenses, same situation. The new lens is going to have a different response to exposure. Some people use the ExpoDisc. I find it a little clumsy. I much prefer to use white balance exposure targets, and these are three of the best. The top one is by X-Rite, Munzel. It's called the Color Checker. It's straightforward. It's built well. It isn't going to yellow. It's a very high quality item. The second one is Pounds Labs White Balance Exposure Target, or Wibbit for short. It's made out of some of the same materials that makes the color checker above. Uh, you'll notice this one only has two tones instead of three. As it turns out, you don't need that third tone at all to get good color and exposure. The bottom one is Ed Pierce's PhotoVision. Let's look at the Wibbit. It's very much like the other two. The only difference is it only has two tones as opposed to three. To use this device, photograph it at the position that you're going to be shooting, where you want the exposure to be right. You take a picture of it and you shoot the white area and a little bit of the black. And what this gives you is a simplified histogram. Instead of the pile of worms it usually is, your histogram is two clean spikes. These two spikes represent left as dark, right is the high key part. If those spikes are centered the way these are, your exposure is absolutely perfect. When the spikes move to the left, it's underexposed. It's very easy to see that it's underexposed, and in fact, this is about a third of a stop. So imagine how accurate this can be. You can actually see differences of a tenth of a stop. If you overexpose, the two spikes together move to the right. So the goal is, you take a picture of the Wibbit, you examine the spikes, adjust your f-stop until the spikes are centered, and this will give you a perfect exposure. It can be used with flash, it can be used with available light, it can be used in almost any situation. Now, as far as white balance, it would be great if we could custom white balance every picture we do. Automatic white balance we already discussed is not an option. Here's our spectrum. And the sun falls right in the middle at 5,000 Kelvin. This is between 10 and 2. It's midday sun. The other situation we run into periodically is a cloudy day. Well, the cloudy day is a little bit bluer, but mostly it's a sunny day with a diffuser over it. If we were to use presets and jump back and forth every time a cloud came out, we'd be driving ourselves nuts. But as it turns out, the electronic flash setting is exactly between these two. So anytime you're photographing on a cloudy day or on a sunny day, you can set your white balance icon to electronic flash and get excellent results. The other setting that we use a lot is open shade. Now, open shade is considerably cooler than sunlight, so we can get away with using the open shade icon, the little house with the shadow next to it. In situations other than these two, early in the day, late in the day, deep in the forest where the light's filtering through green leaves, deep in the forest where it's bouncing off of red leaves, we can't get away with that. In those situations, we custom white balance. But again, never use automatic white balance. It's a true sign of amateur work and it's going to make you work a lot harder in post-production. What is open shade? Well, open shade 
is a clear area of at least half the sky. If your subject looks straight up, they should see clear sky. They should also see clear sky directly over you. Open shade is not deep in the forest with a hole of blue sky over their head. It means that they're exposed by the vast majority of the sky. If they look up and see trees or an awning or anything else, that's an overhang and it's not open, open shade. In this situation, you'd be better off to custom white balance. When you're positioning your, cell, your subject near the forest, move them out to the edge of the forest so they're lit by the sky and not blocked by the trees. In open shade, we use the shade setting as we mentioned earlier. If you set the camera for flash, everybody's going to look like a schmurf. Using the open shade setting brings the warmth back up, makes the picture look much better. What is a sunny day? Well, like we mentioned earlier, it's the middle of the day. It's not early early, it's not really late. And we're setting our white balance to electronic flash. The match is excellent. If our subject is in the shade but the background is in the sun, we expose for the background and we let the flash fill in the face. Now camera settings. These are the recommended camera settings. Exposure mode, manual. ISO 400, that'll give you enough exposure latitude to shoot any time during a daytime. Shutter speed 200, say your shutter sinks at 250, 200 is a safer number because you're not just one click away from being out of sync. I like to set my quality to large fine when I'm doing small work, but when I am doing volume work, I go considerably down from there, otherwise I'm dealing in huge files. White balance, as we mentioned before, we set it to flash for sunny days or cloudy days. We set it to shade for open shade. Camera monitor brightness should not be fiddled with. We want to set it in the middle of its range and leave it there. You do not add additional sharpening, contrast, or saturation. If they're needed, are much better added in post-production. Get the real image right out of your camera. And as we've said before, and I'm sure we'll say again, Never use automatic white balance. Automatic white balance is one of the devils of digital photography. The other one is overexposure. Always use the sRGB color space. Don't be swayed to using Adobe RGB or one of the custom color spaces. These are not designed for photographic production. No matter what somebody on a blog might tell you about the space being larger, only sRGB matches up with your computer monitor, matches up with your lab, matches up with the internet. So sRGB is the only space you should use. Now I've got a little cheat card we'll be telling you how to get later totally free. It's a little laminated card that includes your camera settings and advice on photographing under the basic lighting situations. So watch for that. Strobe settings. Well, you want a strobe that has TTL capacity. If it's a Canon strobe, that's ETTL. Set the mode to TTL. If you have zoom control on the strobe, which means the cone of light changes according to the zoom position on your lens, set it to automatic. Flash field exposure will be controlled by adjusting the EV setting on the strobe. That is, the exposure value will be moved up and down. Zero on the exposure value means that the flash is going to try to put out exactly the right amount for whatever f-stop you're set at. Until you become proficient with the techniques in this video, mount your flash directly to your camera. Later on you can use a radio control TTL remote and put it on a light stand. Do not use any form of diffusion as this takes too much away from the flash film. Balancing ambient exposure and flash fill. Now let's talk about metering out of doors. When we want to meter the sun, we're actually metering the solar exposure just as it falls on the face. So what we want to do, if we're using a meter, point the dome toward the compass direction under the sun. Don't point it up at the sun. You want the light to fall on that dome the same way it falls on your face, three-dimensionally. 
if you're using a white balance exposure target, you're going to point the printed side of the target toward the horizon under the sun. Photograph just the white area and the little bit of the black, and you can use your spikes to get a very, very accurate exposure. How about cloudy day? Well, in this case, we point the meter toward the camera from the subject position. Try not to block it or throw a shadow on it of your body. If you're using a white balance exposure target, just have your subject hold it directly in front of them. Photograph again, the white area and a little bit of the black, and adjust the f-stop to get the exposure exactly right. One point to remember though, when you're metering or you are using a Wibbit, your flash must be turned off. Turn off the flash so you're only getting the ambient exposure. You're going to get the ambient exposure, you're going to dial that into your camera, and then we'll use the EV value to control the strobe. So here's a nice cloudy day, but you notice we still have shadow pockets under the eyes. It's making him look raccoon-eyed. So we're going to set the strobe to a negative of two stops. That's two stops less than the camera is set for. This is just a wink of light. It'll fill in the shadows and fill in the eyes. The picture will look excellent. So here again, we meter the ambient exposure and dial it into the camera. Raccoon eyes all over the place. Turn on your strobe. Set it to two stops below ambient. You get a lovely flash fill. It doesn't jump out at you with the shadows or overpower the subject. Okay, in full sun, we don't want to turn them so their face is partially in the sun and partially in the shade. You either want it fully in the sun, but it'll be squinty and harsh. So generally I turn the subject with their back fully to the sun. I'm going to meter the solar exposure. Where is that? That's with the Wibbit or the meter pointed toward the horizon under the sun. I'm going to dial that exposure into my camera with no flash. Then I'm going to turn on the flash and set the EV to zero. Let's say that my solar exposure said I'm supposed to be F11. By setting the EV to zero, the flash will try to put out F11. Make sure the flash fires, however, or you're going to end up with a silhouette. So let's review. Again, in full sun, their back is to the sun. We want to stay within six or seven feet of the subject. In full sun, this means that you're flash will have enough power to reach out and fill in the shadows. Shoot from a 45 degree angle. You don't want to get directly in front of the subject and shoot them flat. Their shoulders would be square at you. It's not portrait quality. You want to generally shoot a human being from a 45 degree angle. So with their back to the sun, step around 45 degrees to the left or 45 degrees to the right, whichever one gives you the best lit and prettiest background. Watch for flare. Standing directly in front of the subject, the sun's going to come in and hit your lens, and I don't care if you have a lens shade or not, you're still going to get flare. And occasionally that flare is so fine, you don't notice it until you're ready to print the photographs, and there's a blue or green or red octagon in the middle of somebody's face. To avoid flare, shoot from a tripod. When the camera is set, on a tripod, you can walk around, look at the front, and see if your lens shade is sufficient to keep the light off the glass. Any light striking the glass can result in flare. Don't let the sun touch the nose. When you're standing someone with their back to the sun and you turn their face back to you, don't let the sun come around and hit them in the nose. That's too much of their head with raw sunlight on it. As long as you keep the nose out of the sun, you'll have a pleasing photograph. Now judging the image, we can't really judge the exposure by looking at the back of the camera. Why? Well, because the back of the camera is unreliable and your eyes are not adjusted to be able to judge it properly. So the back of the camera could be a little lighter, a little dark. Your eyes could be fooled by the bright sun and the thinking everything's too dark best way to judge exposure is to trust your metering or your wibbiting. You meter the background so you know the background's exposure is correct. You look at their faces and if their faces are equal to the background you've got the right balance. 
if their faces appear brighter than the background, you've got too much exposure from the flash, you need to turn the EV down or decrease it. If their faces are darker than the background, then you need to increase the EV, make it brighter. Again, the goal is to make the face and the background look very similar. Notice the shininess on the overexposed faces. When faces become overexposed, they look as if they are sweaty. They also turn a yellowish. So that's another indicator of overexposure. But again, don't trust the monitor. But you say, how can I make this decision? How can I look at it and know in the bright sun? Well, what you do is get yourself a viewer for the back of your camera. There's several of commercial ones available. You can do this on the cheap by just simply getting yourself a photo loop. An 8x or 10x photo loop is ideal. Now these are designed for looking at prints, so you've got a glass area at the bottom. You want to block out the light in that area, so just simply wrap it with black tape, and you've got a dark room in your pocket. You can put it on the back of the camera and do a much better job of judging the exposure. Sometimes open shade is not open shade. Sometimes open shade is a background that's also in the sun. Now we told you what to do in that situation. When they're in open shade and the background is in the sun, what do we do? We treat it as if they're in the sun. But sometimes it's just a little bit of the background, like in this photograph here. We've only got maybe 15 or 20 percent of the picture that's overexposed. It's not too much. So I treat this picture as if it were open shade. To do that, I would calculate the exposure on the subjects without the flash, and I'd set the flash to a negative two stops EV. If my subject's in the shade but the background is in the sun, I'll treat this as if they were in the sun. I will meter the solar exposure, and I will dial that into the camera that I'll turn my flash on and set it to a EV value of zero. This is fairly late in the day on a cloudy day. You can tell by the lights on in the background. But notice how we can still see detail in the faces and the eyes. There's no deep pockets. This is because we're using just a small amount of strobe, enough to wink and make it look natural without making it overpowered. Here's a case of a couple outside. There's too much sun in the background, so I treated them as if they were in the sun. We took the photograph by metering in the sun setting that on the camera and setting the flash EV to zero. Another situation of open sun. If you look at this closely you can see the shadow under his arm. That indicates that everything in the sh shade would be almost black if it weren't for the flash. In this photograph this little family is in the forest. The lighting is late in the day, and it required custom white balance to make it look right. Well, in this case, the picture was photographed as open shade, when really it should have been a custom white balance to make it warm enough. Let's review. Avoid auto exposure and auto white balance. Both can cause errors. Never use automatic white balance. Tune your camera and lens with an exposure target. If you're going to use a meter, you want to tune that meter to an ideal subject. The ideal subject is the exposure target. What you can do is set up the target under a known lighting condition. Photograph it and adjust your exposure until it's perfect. Once you've got that perfect set of spikes, put your meter in the same place, and if it doesn't match the camera, adjust the meter electronically until they do match. Your meter will then be tuned to the camera and lens. Now again, change lenses, it's going to be off a little bit. Use preset white balances for most work. The flash setting is for sun and cloudy days. Open shade setting is for open shade. And custom for everything else. Flash fill. First, get the ambient exposure. That's done without the flash on. Then set the EV on the strobe to, in the sun, or if the subject is in the shade and the background's in the sun, we're going to set the EV on the TTL to zero. 
in open shade or a cloudy day, that's where the subject is in the shade and the background is in the shade. We're going to set the EV on your flash to negative two stops. Okay, we've got a little bonus material for you. When we photograph a sunset or a sunrise, we often have difficulty getting an accurate exposure, especially with automated systems. The automated system looks at the sun in the picture or the brightest clouds and it says, ooh, this is a bright scene and stops the camera down. So we end up losing our mid-tones. We want to take this picture so that the mid-tones still show up well without blowing out the highlights. So how do we do that? You want to use the highlight alert in your camera to get the best exposure of the sunset. This is the adaption in your camera that allows it to flash black and white when an area of the picture is grossly overexposed. When the flashing stops, the subject is still overexposed by about a third of a stop, but that's our goal for a sunset shot. Take pictures of the sunset with the flashing of visible and slowly stop down the camera and keep shooting until the flashing just disappears. When it first disappears, you've got the ideal situation for the sunset or sunrise. If you want to make this a portrait, just simply set the EV on your strobe to zero, let Mother Nature give you a lovely background, and let your flash, flash fill in the foreground. If you turn the flash off, you'll end up with lovely silhouettes. You can get a free outdoor exposure aid and a PDF copy of this manual if you email me, marion at poundslabs.com, and request outdoor offer number 18. I'll get you a PDF of the manual, and I'll send you a copy of the card. Thank you for your time. Let us know what kinds of presentations you'd like to see in the future. Pounds Labs offers a complete line of innovative products and technical support. Whether it is high-quality portrait production or competitively priced volume services, let Pounds help you succeed.